a rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. Just the way it is impossible for a stone to be alive, that is the way that the writer of this passage wants you to comprehend. That though you were rejected by men, yet you were chosen by God. How can something be re- or someone be rejected by God's most priced creation? God's most important creation. Reject something or someone, but God accepts it. Man is supposed to be the crowning work of God's creation. The greatness and the excellence of God's expertise and wisdom was supposed to be exemplified in the creation called man. And remember in the Bible, the Bible says in Genesis 2, that God brought all the animals to Adam. You would think that God wanted Adam's opinion. Not really. It was just a test. When you fabricate or when you manufacture a vehicle, there are tests you will subject it to. I was told, or I, I, you know, I, I heard somewhere, that when Mercedes Benz produce their car, the engine, they keep it to run non-stop for 1,000 hours. So all they do is put oil, why is running, put oil, put grease, all those things you need to put. It has to run for 1,000 hours to certify the strength, the dynamic and the longevity, the long, the, the, the long, you know, the long-lasting nature or durability of that engine. Maybe that's why there are two kinds of cars. Well, let's leave that. <laughs> Amen. So it was a test. God was not looking for man's opinion. No, it was a test. He created man in his image and after his likeness. Let's test and see if it was truly done as I wanted. And he brought the animals to man to see what he will call them. And whatever name Adam gave them, that was their name. In other words, God wanted to test to see if man really thought like him. Remember that something left God to Adam in Genesis 2 verse 7. The Bible calls it the breath of life. In other words, the... (laughs) The foundation of the existence of anything that is living. When it's a breath of life. Breath is what everything that is living needs to live, isn't it? To exist. So when he said breath of life, it was not just breath into his nostrils. But he gave him the definition of existence. Not just to man, but to all that he had created. That was why out of man came the definition of the purpose of everything created. I hope I'm not too big for you. Yet, the Bible says that there is someone or something that this man that was supposedly perfectly created by God, there is something that men would despise and reject. The Bible says you are living stones. New King James, please. Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. Next verse. He said, you also as living stones. So Jesus Christ was the first example. That's what you see in verse 4. He was rejected of men. The Bible says so in Isaiah chapter 53. In verse 4, that he is despised of men. He was afflicted. Right? Verse 3 rather. It says he is despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Yet he was chosen by God. He was chosen as the one that will bring, that will restore the great divide between God and man. Now the Bible says in 1 Peter where we are reading in verse 5. That we also being creatures in the image of Christ Jesus. Just the way Jesus was one time rejected by men, which led to his death, but he was chosen by God. The Bible says, you too, you will come to him as living stones in verse 5. 
and that you are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, another scripture today. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1. He says, And you, he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Remember, we are coming from living stones, isn't it? And I told you that a stone is dead. So if the Bible is speaking of a particular kind of stone that is alive, as it has explained to us that we were rejected by men, but chosen by God, that means that a living stone is, some, is something that was dead and rejected by men, but has been chosen by God and is alive or made alive by the Spirit. Of course, this stone is not talking about your literal stone. It's talking about you and I. That by the rejection of men, we were left for dead. Anything that is, is not uh, uh, serving its purpose or anything that is not useful to those who are living is as good as dead, isn't it? Uh -huh. So by the rejection of men, by the despising of men, you were also reckoned as dead. But God chose you and because of that, he has made you alive by his spirit. That is what redemption and salvation best explains for us. Back to Ephesians. He said, and you he made alive. That means you were dead. What kind of death? He said, who were dead in trespasses. Because of the nature of sin in us, we were good as dead. We were separated from the life of God. There was no use. Your life had no use to eternity or to God left for dead but the bible says he made you alive this is the work of salvation in trespasses and sins who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the cause of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit who now walks in the sons of disobedience that was our allotment before jesus died he says among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh used to doing what you want what you like how you want or subjected under sin fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath just as the others you know what that sentence means when it says by nature you were children of wrath it means we were condemned for destruction every time god wants to destroy in scripture he will release his wrath when the bible says we were children of wrath it means we were condemned for destruction that was how good we were and in that state certain people neglected you rejected you despised you they said nothing good will come out of you but go to the next verse he said but god i love i love but in scripture anytime you see but in scripture it always almost always has something good for his children he said, but God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us. Go on. Even when you were dead in trespasses, he said, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Go on. We are reading down to verse 10. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Somebody should have said amen to that. Amen. Seems you weren't following the, the reading. Go back. Let me read it again. He said, and raised us up together. Not only did he make us alive, he raised us up. From whatever pit that life has kept you in. He raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. There's nothing more honorable than that, I'm telling you. Would you rather that than be a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Of a government that will end when the government of his kingdom comes. The Bible says in Revelations that the kingdom of his world have become the kingdom of our God. That in the ages to come, 
he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I like it in message translation. I think in message translation it says we are his masterpiece. Go back to New King James now. Let's read verse 10. He said, For we are his workmanship, his tools, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That means God created you as an implement, as a tool, as a machine, as a device. You know, the Bible speaks of the devices of the enemy. But we are now God's devices. And he forged us for good work. That there is a work he will do with us and through our lives. The Bible says that he had prepared before time that we would walk in them. That means God created you to use you to display a dimension of his glory that is not seen. That's what he said in the verses ahead, uh, before. He says that in the ages to come, there's something that your life will create under the masterpiece of God under the architecture of God something that the world has never seen apostle even in this my poverty you hold on that poverty came in time it was not so in eternity are you hearing what I'm saying he was the king of kings but in time temporarily he was the son of a carpenter did that stop him from fulfilling destiny all right Created in Christ Jesus. Somebody say, I'm created for good works. Those of you that have babies, touch your baby and say, you were created for good works. For good works.